I really want to see if there's a way to harmonize the idea of the single reality whose nature is consciousness with the idea of the so-called material, but evolution specifically the fact that there has been an evolutionary process to get us um to this point so what how do you um bring the topics together of the fact that there has been this evolutionary process for the um knowing to be enabled well can we reconcile idealism with matter well there is this thing out there and even in us, that we call matter, right? There can be a dispute about what is it exactly? How do we conceptualize it? What true statements can we, can we make about it? And what false statements? But there is this thing we see, smell, touch, that, that's undeniable. So if idealism cannot be reconcilable with that, it's just playing wrong, <laughs> right? Because there is this thing out there. Um, I think it's completely reconcilable because you see, um, we only know matter insofar as we experience it. If there is something out there that nobody ever has experienced, it might as well not exist. It becomes just a conceptual inferential reality. It doesn't have any, any true existence. Um, what idealism would say is that what we call matter is what conscious inner life looks like from a certain perspective. To be more specific, I would say from across a dissociative boundary, but then you start getting into the details. So matter is just what conscious in your life looks like from a perspective. If I look in the mirror, I see my conscious inner life presenting itself to me in the form of an image in the mirror. If I look at somebody else's brain on their brain scanner, the images I will see on the monitor of the brain scanner are what the inner life of that person, the conscious inner life of that person uh, uh, will be looking like from my perspective. So I would even define matter as what experiential states look like from a perspective. And is there something beyond matter? Of course, there are other experiential states that uh, are not directly translatable into matter, like uh, our endogenous feelings, our emotions, uh, even some of our abstract thoughts. Uh, uh, what we call matter is what presents itself on the screen of perception. Mm -hmm. In a sense, it is perception. But there are more experiential states than just perceptual states. If I lock you up in an ideal sensory deprivation chamber and you can't hear, see, touch, smell, anything, you will still have experiential states. You will still, you still have experiential states like desire, fear, uh, uh, um, thoughts, emotions of every kind. So matter is one part of the puzzle and it's certainly reconcilable with the idealism. Oh, sorry, I gave, gave you yes. an extended answer and I forget the second part of your question, Please. <laughs> evolution. Um, we have very, very good reasons to infer um, that the organization of living organisms has evolved. Not only that, even the universe has evolved. It started as a fairly uniform um, framework, so to say, and then because of quantum fluctuations and gravity being applicable to those quantum fluctuations, it started differentiating itself and formed, you know, eventually, you know, matter and stars and planets and moons and life. We have plenty of evidence uh, to indicate that. And I also don't think any of that is, is incompatible with idealism. On the contrary, it's even, it, it, it even substantiates idealism because uh, even if everything is consciousness, it's not only your or my consciousness alone. It's a transpersonal consciousness, so to say, spatially unbound. So we have to account for how individual private consciousness has arisen within this transpersonal background. And that's evolution right there. Mm. Okay. So out of the which you've called a, like a cosmic consciousness or other people call an infinite consciousness. There is a, an, there is an, a private consciousness, as you said, or an individual um, consciousness that, that, that forms. And I really like how uh, Rupert Spira has talked about this idea of the preparation and like the more that you perforate uh, the, the this circle of the individual or the private consciousness, the more that you truly feel like you are 
and Sri Aurobindo has talked about the simultaneity being a key of life. Can you simultaneously be an individual, be the universal and the transcendent at the same time? Uh, I think that's a really beautiful way to also put it. I like, I like how, yeah, I, I'm, I totally vibe on the idea that these are absolutely compatible things. I think, you know, and Sri Aurobindo also said that one of the main keys to life is to just never cut life into two. And if you, if you do that, if you always keep it at one, every time you try and break these concepts into this materialism versus idealism and, and like you try and like consciousness only versus materialism, it's just, it's just this idea of like breaking it up and trying to like, um, but I liked your point about sensory deprivation. I think that's an interesting one. So even if I'm, cause for, especially for those that have been in sensory deprivation tanks. I think that's extremely salient because if you have been in them, you know that it it's just, it, it really, in a sense, it also kind of feels like the womb. And I think that's really uh, beautiful. But, and you occasionally, sure, you can maybe hear like a little bit of the warm water like slosh against uh, the side. But really, you're you're there completely sensory deprived and if you don't have a good job of taming the the elephant i mean the elephant is you know can be on cocaine and just your mind the elephant monkey mind just you know and so if you yeah and so that's the idea that you still get some sort of bubbles of experience uh even during a complete sensory deprivation i would say it's the prime directive of mind uh, its prime directive is not to be quiet <laughs> it is to generate experiences endogenous experiences and then deceive itself because if there is no deception at some level of reality then everything just poof goes out of existence so uh, reality uh, is fundamentally dependent on a certain level of self-deception i'm not saying that it's personal only there could be something transpersonal behind it but it's the nature of mind things up and deceive itself in the process so when you are in a sensor deprivation chamber you may feel very quiet in the beginning but wait a little longer and you start seeing that it's almost impossible to stop that that dynamism that dynamic activity of mind to produce images produce thoughts produce narratives and then deceive itself get get gets all tied up in its own narrative uh, it's it's the, the nature of the beast <laughs> yeah 